right, seeing no one else in the queue other than the author of the bill, excuse me, the author of the resolution, we will go to the author of the resolution and then to the vote on adoption. Lady from the 99th has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So this was first brought to my attention back in 2017. There was a man on my street who'd been molesting children. And um, I live in a very, very safe community, and actually I live on a pretty darn nice street. So we were shocked. And then the gentleman pled guilty, and he was out in his backyard riding his tractor out at his burn pile, and I reached out to the deputy district attorney in Waukesha County. And I said, how is this gentleman, who has admitted that he had molested these children, out here riding his tractor and sitting at his bonfire in the middle of our neighborhood where there's lots of kids, and the bus stop happens to be at the end of his driveway? And he said, well, Cindy, the only thing we can really look at to set bail is to make sure they come back to court. And I'm looking at him thinking, you are crazy. And he said, no, no. And I said, you know what? I can work with you on this. We'll pass, a, we'll pass a bill. That's what we do. We can fix this problem. And he goes, oh, no. This is in the state constitution. And I said, well, I think we need to fix the constitution. And he kind of laughed and said, that's a pretty heavy lift. And I said, well, you don't know me. So it took, started in 2017, and we've been working on this a long time. And there were concerns that we were going to end up with people who were maybe shoplifting, not violent crimes, innocent sitting in jail. And, and we want to make sure that we balance the violent criminal against people who are innocent and have a right to a defense. And that's what some of these amendments have done for us. And I think that we've done a really, really good job getting to that. So what this does now, it does allow a judge or a court commissioner to look at your past violent criminal convictions. And this would actually hold, as, a, as the representative beside me mentioned, that he has someone who has very low cash bail in his district. Well, this would kind of hold that judge accountable. Because now you could look at that judge and say, okay, this is their fourth offense for domestic abuse, and you're going to give him out at $250 because he's just going to go back and beat up his wife again. So it gives us a chance to hold those judges and, and court commissioners accountable for their, for their actions and ask them why they are doing this. This allows you also then to make sure they're going to appear in court. It also is used to protect members of the community from serious harm. Currently, it says serious bodily harm. Serious bodily harm does not include child molestation and human trafficking. And I think we can all agree that those are some violent, disgusting offenses. So this would be serious harm as defined by the legislature, so that we have the opportunity to say, what is a violent crime that the judge is going to look at when setting your bail? It also is to prevent the intimidation of witnesses and the affirmative of their defense. So this has been a long time coming, and as I listen to everybody talk about these different scenarios, I'll tell you, we could go on for hours and hours. Last weekend in Milwaukee, we had five more people shot. One was a 15-year-old girl. Our, our clearance rate is 40% right now in Milwaukee because we don't have enough cops, and nobody will help. They'll, they'll go into communities and say, who saw something? And the answer is nobody saw anything. So we are in a situation where the crime is, is growing across the state, mainly in Milwaukee, and it's coming out to my district. I mean, our police officers are actually working overtime trying to help with the problems we have with the crime coming out to our side of, this, of, of the city. So this is one more tool we can give the judges and the court commissioners. I think we did a great job balancing the, the, the innocence of somebody by having them look at their past criminal violent convictions. So this is something that everybody should be behind, and I think everybody in Milwaukee should be a yes on this. I can't turn on the news without seeing somebody was shot, someone was carjacked. We have more carjackings in the city of Milwaukee right now than they do in Chicago, a city five times the size of ours. So let's give our judges the tools so they can keep violent people off the streets. Let's let the people in, Milwaukee, in, the, in the, the state of Wisconsin decide if this is what they want, because I'm going to tell you, in my district, they're screaming for this. So I'd really like to see a unanimous bipartisan vote on this. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The question is, having been read three times, shall Assembly Joint Resolution 107 be adopted? The Chief Clerk has two pair. We hereby pair on the following questions relating to the adoption of Assembly Joint Resolution 107. Representative Shanklin for the adoption of Assembly Joint Resolution 107. Representative Verwink against the adoption of joint, Assembly Joint Resolution 107. 
We hereby pair on the following questions related to the adoption of Assembly Joint Resolution 107. Representative Sarah Rodriguez for the adoption of Assembly Joint Resolution 107 and Representative Doyle against the adoption of Assembly Joint Resolution 107. The gentleman from the 43rd and the 94th will refrain from voting. All in favor of adoption will vote aye. All opposed will vote no. The clerk will open the roll. Have all members recorded their vote? Have all members recorded their vote? If so, the clerk will close the roll. There are 69 ayes, 70 ayes, 21 noes. The resolution is adopted. Gentlemen from the 5th. Thank you.